Hey, it's Tommy Hodgins. You may know me from my project CSS Plus, or as I prefer to call it, CSS Please. Now, today we're going to explore caffeinated style sheets. And if you're not sure what that is, it's caffeinated style sheets. And what does that spell? It's, it's CSS. It's just got JavaScript inside, all right? We're gonna write CSS style sheets with JavaScript inside them. We're gonna compile them to CSS and the JavaScript we need. And that's it. That's what we're doing today. All right, so I'm gonna create some new folders and stuff. Let's get, ex let's explore this. So I'm on my desktop. I'm gonna say make dir test. I'm gonna move into the test folder here. I've got nothing inside it. Let's touch uh, compile.js. Let's make an index.html. And let's make styles.css. And we'll use the right command for that. So now I've got three files in here. I'm ready to go. I'm going to npm install caffeine, because that's how I roll. This is what we're doing JavaScript in CSS. It's bringing in everything it needs and then we're ready to go. So how do I get out of here? All right, so we wanna open these three files. So we got our styles, our index, and our compile. So the first thing I'm gonna do is require caffeine. Now we can run caffeine and we need a plugins object with style sheet and rule object with our plugins. I need a file to read, so I'm gonna call that styles.css, which we haven't written yet, but it's right here. And I'm gonna output, output.js, yes, I'm Canadian and output.css and those are going to be our two files that we're loading in the html page so let's go ahead and create that now so here i've got just the basic html elements For this plugin down here, I need a head and a body, otherwise I wouldn't have these. So we're going to link in output.js, the most Canadian way I can say that, and we're also going to link in output.css. So just for fun, let's create a div here. This will be what we test. So I've got compile with no plugins. I've got a styles.css file that we're gonna read. I have an index file, which is gonna read output.js and output.css, and those are the files I'm gonna output. So now what we need to do is we need to import some plugins or write some plugins or somehow include some plugins in here. And we need to write some CSS that depends on those plugins. And what we're gonna see is that this CSS is gonna get compiled into the CSS and JS that we need to interpret the styles we've written. So how could I go ahead and do this? What if I do npm install CSS polyfill patterns? That has a few. So there's probably about 40 different plugins we've got here. So I'm going to say sudos is that looks right. So our pseudo classes have been imported here from this module. And I'm going to go ahead in here and say 
spread those here. Or I could just say, make our rules that object. I think we're good to go. Oh, I don't like that. I hate when an editor types things for me that I did not type. So I have a UL element with three li children. One of those has a class of target. So if I'm over here and I say UL border 5px dashed purple, we should see that pass through. Uh, what do I have here? It's not the right folder. I'll just open it. So where is my missing bracket? After argument list. Gotcha. So if we go over here, we should see that we have our 5px dashed border. Now if we write a rule here, like ul JavaScript has li, and we said we want that background to be lime. Any ul in this document that has an li child has a background of lime. Now, if I were to copy this entire list, and remove this class. Now let's change this to has a class of target. So you'll notice here only the UL that has an LI with a class of target has the blue, uh, green background. So what's actually going on here, let's take a peek inside our output.js and output.css files. Here we've got just our original untouched rule in the output.css. And in our output.js, we have a copy of the JS and CSS uh, function here. So this will power all of our event-driven virtual style sheets. Then we have a custom style rule for has and the function for that. And now we have one rule for has, which uses our UL, a target, and the declaration we're adding to it. So you can see why when we load this page and we're loading output.css and output.js, we are seeing the dashed purple border that's happening on both ULs. And we're also seeing that when a UL has a dot target, its background is Lime. And that's happening as well. So if you like this, go ahead and smash that like button. Just absolutely dominate the subscribe button. Do what you can for me. Thank you.